Hey everybody, welcome to Vegan Sexy Cool, the podcast. Now, we decided to record this for record this on video so it could also be placed on YouTube so you'll be able to listen to this wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, but you'll also be able to check us out on YouTube as well. And that way you can see what I'm wearing from time to time because I do love fashion and I love to show off vegan fashion to show you that there are great fashionable things out there um, that are that are very affordable that are vegan. Like these boots that I have. Look, these all these come these are, are come above the knee. They are Jessica Simpson boots, but look at how they shimmer. They are so nice and I love them and they are comfortable. These are my Christmas presents to myself. All right, so now the par- purpose of Vegan Sexy Cool, the podcast. Now I got notes because I wasn't planning on doing this on camera, so I'll be looking at my notes and looking at you like I do when I'm on TV sometimes. So the purpose of the podcast is to show you that you don't have to sacrifice when you are vegan. A lot of people think that when they go vegan, it's all about giving up this and giving up that. Well, that is not true. It's actually a hip and cool and sexy. You've got to throw cool and sexy in there. Way to be good to yourself and to the planet. Because listen... Life, it has to be about something that's bigger than just us, right? We have to care about what's going on all around us. So my goal every week is to bring you information, introduce you to some really cool and smart people, and give you some insight into what's going on with my vegan journey. So let's get to it. So I do have, well, two great guests, and then I'm going to have an actual, we're going to do this phone a friend segment. I'll tell you more about it. So I have three guests coming on. So the first is Erica Taylor. She's a producer on the documentary, The Invisible Vegan, which takes a look at unhealthy dietary practices in the African-American community. And I know all about this. I grew up in Atlanta. <clears throat> My family is from, you know, parts of Philadelphia, Albany, Georgia, rural South, So I know all about unhealthy eating among African-Americans. And when it comes to, you know, eating for Thanksgiving, family gatherings, there's a lot of unhealthy food on the table. So this documentary takes a look at that. So I'm really excited um, to discuss how it came together, what they explore in the documentary, and how you can check it out for yourself. My second guest is an entrepreneur who is making a name for herself in the vegan food space. She is the co-owner of Coffee and Cornbread. It is, listen to me. One of my favorite spots for vegan food is not a vegan restaurant. It's a regular restaurant, but they have an extensive vegan menu. Um, One of my favorite go tos. And I also um, I know (laughs) the owners laugh at me because I I stole it from them, but I make it at home. Grits, vegan eggs with onions and green peppers, vegan sausage and a little piece of uh, vegan cornbread. It's one of my favorite things that I get. and But they have a, a lot of different things on the menu, but we'll talk about that um, when she comes on in a bit. And last but not least, I'm going to do what I told you about, a little encouragement coaching, right? So my goal once a week is to have a conversation with one of you. So we'll tell you about how you can join in on the conversation, how we can find out about your story and select you to be a part of this. So to help you with any issues that you're having with veganism, so you could be a newbie, right? You could be vegan curious, vegan curious, or vegan curious as we like to call it, or you could be a longtime vegan. Um, I've been vegan for two years and still, you know, I have a lot. I'm still new. And so while I've learned a lot, I still have a lot to learn, so I'm always researching and asking questions um, of fellow vegans. But for, you know, this is a place to have a conversation. Sometimes it'll be just, you know, me talking to you. And other times it will be our guests who are here in the studio chiming in on whatever questions that you have at all. So we'll do it. It's called like phone a friend. We'll we'll end the show with that. So that's what we're going to do on the show today. So let's get to a bit of my story. Now, as I said, I've been vegan for two years. I made the switch for ethical reasons because I love animals. And I realized that they do not have to die in order for me to live. So listen, from fabulous foods to wonderful food, no animals have died for me to be here today. <laughs> um, so I didn't just cut out animal products in my diet, which a lot of people think when you're vegan that it's just food, but it's lifestyle too. When it comes to not just my clothes, my food, but the makeup that I use, the products that I use in my hair, the nail polish that I use, even though my nails this is vegan nail polish. It's not my nails are not looking great great today because 
I was cooking a lot over the holiday and washing dishes and things like that. And I did not have time to get a proper manicure, but vegan nail polish, it works really well. And Target is starting to sell more and more vegan nail polish. And as we move along with episodes on this podcast, we'll definitely get to vegan nail polishes that are out there. Um, it's a journey, but it is worth it. So I'm not mad about that. So in addition to this podcast, I want to let you know that there is vegansexycool.com. That is my lifestyle magazine. It's been up for a while, so there are a lot of great articles there. Go and check it out. Get some great information on living a vegan lifestyle. So let me talk about what's been happening in my kitchen. I mentioned the holiday and that I did a lot of cooking. I cooked, listen to me, my best Christmas dinner ever and it was all vegan let me tell you what was on the menu so i had i had to make notes so i wouldn't forget anything so i had collard greens that i perfected i think i made them about three christmases in a row vegan collards without the smoked turkey which i you know i moved on from ham hocks to smoked turkey thought i was doing something but now i do it all vegan delicious i'm gonna put the recipe up um black eyed peas i made those for uh new year's eve delicious Still need a little doctoring, but they're good. I made candy yams, cornbread, uh, mac and cheese. I made a gravy for the first time. That was really good. And I made a stuffing that I added mushrooms to and green pepper. It, let me tell you, the food was really, really good. And that's just not me saying it. There were guests there who loved the food. Um, I didn't, you know what I messed up on though? So I was so busy. I didn't really take a lot of photos, which I hate. I posted it on my IG stories and I'll look and see if it still exists somewhere in my phone. And if it does, I'll post it, but it was really, really good. So Christmas dinner, that's what I made. And for New Year's, New Year's day, of course, I made another batch of collards and I made black eyed peas and cornbread and it was all good. So I will at some point share my vegan collard greens recipe with you because listen I can't keep it all to myself but listen the way I started I'm a cookbook girl and I went to uh, online you know websites for collard greens for vegan collard greens and I took a little bit of this and took a little bit of that and took a little bit of what I was doing before I went vegan for my greens and came up with something really delicious so that was my holiday it was fantastic I'm very proud of myself very happy. All right, so let me talk about something in the news. You know, this weekend, the Golden Globes is happening, and I love a red carpet. I don't know about you, but I love award shows, and Golden Globes kicks it off officially, right, uh, for Hollywood. And the shows usually start, the award shows usually come on at about 8 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, I'm usually at my television with something to eat, a little cocktail, ready to watch the red carpet. I watch the coverage before people start walking the red carpet. That's how much I love award shows. Don't even get me started on the Oscars. Although I did have to sit out on the Oscars for Oscars So White. But then, you know, they fixed it the next year, so I came back. Um, but Golden Globes, I am going to watch it this weekend, even though I was really upset that When They See Us was not nominated for anything, which is crazy to me. I was really upset about that because I think Ava DuVernay did her thing with that um, series on Netflix. And if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Um, I think it is such important work and it's we really everybody needs to see it. She wasn't nominated. None of the actors from that nominated. Um, Lupita Nyong'o in the movie Us, to me, should have been nominated, snubbed. Queen and Slim, if you have not seen this movie, run to the theater. It's still in theaters now. It was so good, not nominated for anything. I do not understand, but I still want to watch because Eddie Murphy is nominated for Dol Dolomite Is My Name, and I really feel like this is his year. You know, he just did SNL, and can I tell you, I was in the audience for that, and it was, I will never forget. I've never been to SNL before, and a friend of mine got tickets at the last minute, and so we went unforgettable experience to to witness that him coming back after what 35 years um so he's nominated for dolomite is, is my name and then cynthia erivo is nominated for harriet and beyonce is nominated for uh best song in that category and j-lo is nominated um I can't remember the name of her movies. It's, it, it, you know what it is, but she's nominated. And anytime Beyonce and J-Lo are on a red carpet, I can't miss that. So 
I'll definitely be watching. Speaking of globes, let's get back to vegan stuff because none of those people are vegan to my knowledge, except for um, Ava DuVernay is a vegan. I recently posted that on my Instagram page. I was very happy to hear that. Long time vegan. So it was announced that the meal that the stars will be eating at the Golden Globes is going to be all vegan. And if you, I'm looking at how dirty my glasses are. If you watch the Golden Globes, it's really kind of like a big casual dinner party, right? So everyone's eating, they're drinking, they're getting up on commercial breaks and talking to each other. Um, so the food that they're going to be eating this year is vegan. Very happy to hear that. Let me tell you what's on the menu. So a chilled golden beet soup appetizer. Um, the main course is king oyster mushroom scallops. They're going to have wild mushroom risotto. Um, and I don't know what's for dessert, but that's vegan as well. I love that. But they're going to have carrots um, and green Brussels sprouts. They have purple baby Brussels sprouts, which I, I never heard of, but that is on the menu. So the organizers at the Globe said that they wanted to do this because cl the climate, this is a quote, the climate crisis is impossible to ignore. And after speaking with our peers and friends in the community, we felt challenged to do better. I love this, but get this. You want some gossip? The chef at the Beverly um, Hilton Hotel where they do the Globes every year, he didn't want to do a vegan meal. I don't know if he protested. He did not want to do it. His name is Matthew Morgan. He's the executive chef there, but he was not on board at first, but he did come around because they really made it about the environment and he is concerned about the environment. So that's how they were going to convince him. Can you imagine if he was like, I'm not doing it. But in addition to the vegan meal that they'll be serving to all the celebrities, all the buffet tables around where people, you know how you grab a snack if you're backstage at something, all of that will be vegan. And then they're also going to have glass bottles instead of uh, 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 plastic bottles for guests, you know, that are attending. And they're also, instead of plastic straws, going to have paper straws. So I'm really happy about that. I'm working in my life on getting, on not using plastic bottles anymore. I have to admit, I still do it just because it's so convenient, but I'm really trying to get out of that. With the straws, I'm done with plastic straws. I bought the silicone straws at TJ Maxx, and I'm a TJ Maxx girl. I'm a Max, Maxinista, as they say, because they have everything. So I got these silicone straws there, and I carry them around. I have them at my desk at work. I have them at home. So I really, I'm done with plastic straws. So they're going to have paper straws at the Golden Globes. So I'm happy that um, they are going to be more environmentally minded at the Golden Globes, one of my favorite award shows. So we are going to get ready for our first guest and um, we will be right back. So, are you ready for our first guest? I had to put my headphones on because she is uh, via Zoom. This is Erica Taylor, um, who I've known for years, but she's also a documentarian, and she is a producer on the documentary The Invisible Vegan, and it looks at basically bad eating habits in the African-American community, but it also traces the history of that and talks about why we should, as a people, lean into veganism. So without further ado, Erica, welcome to Vegan Sexy Cool. Thank you, Jackie. It's so wonderful to be on this ground, groundbreaking podcast. I'm so excited. I'm excited you're here. You're my first guest. Yay! <laughs> we go way back, so I'm really yes. delighted to have her here um, because you're also a vegan. How long have you been vegan? Well, I was vegetarian from 2015 to uh, the beginning of 2019, and just in 2019, I decided to go 100% vegan, and it was the best decision I have ever made. Now, working on this, pod on this podcast, working on the documentary, did that influence your decision to become vegan? Oh, absolutely. Just going through that process and meeting all of the um, kind of hardcore black vegans out there and um, listening to the rationale about why we should go vegan. I slowly kind of started getting into it. But by the end of filming, I was just ready to jump on board. And um, there was just maybe like one or two items on my plate, literally, that kept me uh, vegetarian. But uh, the film definitely was a strong driving force in me becoming vegan. So let's talk a little bit about the film, which we can tell people where they can see it a little bit later, and we don't want to give too much away, but I really talked about what the premise is all about. Tell us a little bit more, because a lot of people hear the word vegan, and they automatically think white people. 
They yes. do not think that this is something <laughs> that the black community can do. I'm not giving up my, you know, my ham hocks. You know, I'm not giving up my my beef. I'm not giving up this. I'm not giving up that. But what do you discover? Because you said you were around this community of black vegans. What do you uncover in this uh, documentary? Well, of course, veganism is traditionally we always associate veganism with uh, white people and it wasn't a word that we even considered in the black community because we're so strong about our eating habits and so strong about our foods that we consider authentic to the black community that um you know embarking upon this film meant that we were going to be going against um what was traditional belief about black food black food soul food right food for the soul food that means love food that means family you know so um changing that definitely meant that we were taking on a challenge with the invisible vegan but um you know we definitely wanted people to uh, open their minds a little bit more about the concept of veganism with this film um we talk about of course that that tradition that goes all the way back to slavery with soul food which is what we all rely on when we're talking about holiday events and what we do on sunday dinners and things like that so we definitely address that within the film but but we also talk about really important issues like how we don't have um, healthy food readily available in a lot of our black communities and talk about the food desert issue. So we address those issues as well and talking about those challenges, which you have to include that because those areas are very heavily populated by African-Americans and Hispanic people. So um, we definitely wanted to um, look toward that. We also address um, how veganism can help uh, when it comes to uh, your health issues and how your body responds to food. What's the proper response after you eat food? What's the negative response after you eat food? And why does your body do that? So we talk a little bit about that as well. Um, and then we also um, cover some of the issues about uh, you know sports and, and men and um, how it may not be manly to be vegan. So we cover that topic as well too. So we kind of go the spectrum when it comes to veganism and the African-American community. So we definitely encourage people to watch it from start to finish because we cover quite a few topics. Yeah, I know, um, you know, and I haven't had an opportunity to watch the film in its entirety, but I did watch the trailer. And one thing that you all talked about was tracing our roots as a people back to Africa and how our bodies are not designed to digest meats and dairies and things like that. You know, a lot of people deal with lactose intolerance, right? And a lot of that comes from what we're able as a people to digest. And you all deal with that in the film as well, correct? Yes, we absolutely do. Um, a lot of controversy surrounds the fact that we are, a lot of people feel like the way our teeth are made, we're designed to be able to rip meat apart. That's like basically what the function is, when in reality it's not. If you compare the way our dental work looks versus a tiger in the, in right. the uh, jungle uh, who's designed to do things like that, there's a big difference. And so um, you start with that and then you go all the way through the body to the digestive system. And, you know, it's, it's a basic fact out there about how the digestive system works with meat and processing meat in your body. So uh, you have to educate yourself on these things. I'm not going to spit out statistics because I'm not a statistician when it comes to those things, but you definitely want to educate yourself about um, how your body digests these foods, how long it takes your body to digest meats. Um, as opposed to vegetables and what nutrients are brought into your body uh, when you eat what all vegetables or mostly vegetables as opposed to meat. You know, how your body responds in your when you digest it. Um, you know, one of the things I think we even address in the film, because we're pretty raw, we don't, we speak kind of off the top of our heads in the film, we don't really sugarcoat things, but it's not supposed to smell really, really bad when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize that, but you're not supposed to be able to knock down the, the whole hallway. <laughs> so, you know, some of the things people don't, people don't really think about, you know. Right. <laughs> did I get you, Jackie? I did not know that. Well, I thought that, you know, no. poopery is selling so well and all of these air fresheners for the bathroom, the Lysol Listen. spray, you need to have it in there, but not Listen. so, huh? Listen, you're not supposed to be able to knock people out and you're not supposed to be straining. And when you have a <laughs> vegan diet, you shouldn't be doing either. You probably yes. won't be doing either either. So those are kind of the things that we talk about, especially with women's health. Um, you know, and I can talk a little bit more about this later, but women's health is a 
huge issue when it comes to veganism. Yeah. Um, in the film, I address my own story uh, when it comes to veganism and fibroid tumors. So, um, you know, I've had my own struggle with that as well. And I can definitely get into that whenever you're ready. Well, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm still trying to recover from the whole bathroom. <laughs> it's, not, it's not supposed to stink. It's not it's supposed not to stink in there. To- not supposed <laughs> to stink. Yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> That's no a whole other reason to go vegan because people are like, yeah. wait a minute. It's not yeah. supposed to? No, exactly. it is not. So no. wait a minute. I do want to talk to you about your fibroid journey a little bit. We are going to do a whole episode of Vegan Sexy Cool on uh, fibroids. Uh, But I do want to talk to you about your journey, you know, because you've been eating vegan for some time now. And has that improved your health situation specifically with fibroids? Oh, absolutely. Um, I was diagnosed with fibroids in 2008. And I was dealing with a lot of the symptoms that, you know, 80% of African-American women deal with on a daily and monthly basis, excessive bleeding, pain. Um, You know, you find yourself in the fetal position and missing days of work. Um, Mine got to the point where they were extremely excessive, a couple of trips to the emergency room. um, And then in 2014, um, I ended up um, having surgery to have them removed. Prior to that, which is something I address in the film as well, um, I I was anemic, anemic, and a lot of people around me were saying, "Well, you know, red meat is really good for anemia. It builds up your blood." Yeah. So I I basically just gorged myself on red meat. I went to um, you know those places. I think it's pronounced churiscaria where they oh, have yeah, a- yeah. It's like they come you out know? with all this meat, just meat, meat, oh, meat. Oh my yep. goodness. I wore those places out. I think we probably went maybe once a week for lunch or twice a week for lunch. And, you know, that's just ridiculous. So I ate a lot of red meat. Now, mind you, um, I was probably about a size two. I do want to put that in there because I I was small and no one would expect what was going on inside my body was actually going on. But I gorged myself on red meat thinking that was going to help. Um, And so by 2014, the symptoms had just gotten so crazy that I went to see a a physician at UCLA. And, um, you know, she said, you know what, we've got to go ahead and address these and and get you into surgery to get them taken out. And thankfully, I had a physician who was very uh, cautious about uh, fertility as well. So I had the surgery and um, she removed 22 fibroid tumors. Wow. So when I was first diagnosed in 2008, I had six, maybe seven. I went through this process for years of, you know, eating the red meat. I was still on birth control, which was pumping estrogen into my body. And next thing you know, they said I have, she said I had 22 that she removed. So, um, you know, I was really astonished by that, but I still hadn't made the connection yet to meat. So then when we started filming The Invisible Vegan in 2015, um, I started studying up and reading more about what could be contributing to uh, fibroid tumors and the growth of them because I did still have the, um, the chance that they would come back. So um, later on, I would say, I believe it was the end of 2016. I went for a physical and my doctor said, hey, your, your levels are a little low. Um, you know, I still wasn't totally vegan or totally sold on veganism yet. And she said, your levels are a little low. I know you've been eating as a vegetarian. I'm going to need you to reincorporate some organic meats back into your diet to get your levels back up. Well, it's the doctor. So you want to listen to the doctor, right? right? right. Some of us go and believe that the doctor is like the know-all, tell-all, so you believe what they say. So I, from December of 2016 to January, the end of January 2017, I went back to eating what I thought was organic chicken, um, organic fish. I said, as long as I know where it's coming from, it's okay, right? Yeah. By the end of January, beginning of February, I started to feel my symptoms come back from fibroids. And the doctor confirmed that my fibroids had returned. So at that moment, Jackie, that told me right then and there, okay, I get the sign. I get it. Because I hadn't had any symptoms, real symptoms before. And then all of a sudden, I eat meat for two months and the symptoms are back. So I said to myself, you know what? I get it. I get it. Mm. And so from then on, I have um, associated eating red meat with fibroid tumors. And since that time period of 2017, more studies have shown that red meat, dairy contribute to the symptoms of fibroid tumors. Yeah. 
So, you know, me taking that stance back in 2017 for my body, I'm very thankful for that. Um, and so, you know, pushing forward um, to 20, 2019, actually, um, you know, my husband and I began the fertility journey. Um, I was given a very low chance of conceiving a child. And I'll also be talking about this more in my upcoming film, uh, Red Alert, The Fight Against Fibroids. But um, I decided in January of 2019 to go 100% vegan. I had, uh, again, 0.1 chance of ever getting pregnant. I, I went vegan in January. By March, I was pregnant. Mm, wow. I was pregnant in March. And um, unfortunately, that pregnancy did not um, come to fruition. But for the first time in my life, I had become pregnant. And it was only two months after I went 100% vegan. Wow. I went 100% vegan and soy free. Mm. Um, so then uh, later on that year too, and um, again, this will be in the film as well, um, it happened again. I got pregnant again. So I went from a 0.1 chance of ever getting pregnant, Jackie, mm -hmm. to going vegan and getting pregnant twice. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I most people, that, that story does make some, some people sad, and it made me sad at the time, too. But um, I look at it as, as a blessing that I was introduced to this lifestyle that can change the course of not only my life, but the course of so many other of our African-American women out there who are struggling and going through the same thing and wondering why can't they get pregnant? Why is this fibroid situation just taking over? And, um, you know, like I said, I'm on a journey now to answer a lot of those questions via my next documentary. But, um, you know, I just wanted to, to tell that story yeah. and just to share it with people and tell them how vegan has changed my life. Yeah. And this is real. This is very real. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you're doing this documentary so you can focus more because it's a huge issue um, in the African-American community with black women, this whole issue with fibroids, which people just don't seem to take, and the medical community specifically does not seem to take seriously enough. So I'm happy that you're shining a light on that. And I applaud you for sharing your journey. I know it is such a painful story to tell. Um, and I, I I hate that you and your husband have are, have gone through that. Um, but I, I'm encouraged you know, that you all are still moving forward with that. And I know that, you know, you're a spiritual woman. So I know yeah. prayer is a big part of your life. Absolutely. And so I know you are encouraged in spite of everything um, that you've been through that, um, you know, that there's going to be a happy ending for you and your husband um, when oh, it comes to a pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. And one of the things I wanted to add here, Jackie, too, is um, – during those those moments where I was pregnant, uh, girl, Beyond Meat saved my life. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you you strive to to reach your your levels of protein that you need to reach yeah. during pregnancy. So um, Beyond Meat has so much protein just in one burger or in one sausage. Yeah, and uh, it it just really saved my life. In life, in addition to just being so good. <laughs> Girl, I, I can't be beyond twice a week. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's so good. I love it so much. I don't want to hear anybody arguing about fake meats and how, listen, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready to give up my fake meat. That's not the kind of vegan I am. I'm not there yet. So don't bring that to the table. I'm glad you brought up beyond meats because they are delicious. And yes, in your case, they, they got you through. They got yes, you through. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. um, Say it, the name again of your documentary you're doing on fibroids so we can keep that in the front of our minds. Absolutely. It's called Red Alert, the Fight Against Fibroids documentary, and we're expecting to release this year in 2020. Um, it is an entire revolution. We're calling it the Ram Revolution, Red Alert Movie Revolution. Um, it's a documentary. We, we hope that it's going to be a foundation that's going to keep giving after the documentary is released. And most importantly, we hope it's going to help women across the country understand their fibroid journey and be able to share with other women going through the same problem, but also call attention and awareness to the fact that this is an issue that we don't know the cause of. Yeah. We don't know the cause of fibroid tumors or endometriosis. And um, the medical community, while there's some studies out there and there's some, some technological developments out there, um, unfortunately, there just hasn't been enough attention given to something that affects 70% of all women, but 80% 
of African American women. Yeah. So we yeah. definitely want to, to to draw attention to that. So um, we are hoping that the Red Alert Movie Revolution will will spread wide. Um, people can go to the website for Red Alert, but most importantly, you can follow us on Instagram at Red Alert Movie or on uh, Twitter at Fibroid Movie for more information. I love that. Well, Erica, thank you so much again for sharing your story. Um, the Invisible Vegan, where can we find that? You can find that on Amazon Prime right now. Um, we have gotten calls from all over the country from wonderful people like you, Jackie, who are doing this, this um, groundbreaking podcast um, to colleges who are interested in talking about this topic, black vegan organizations all over the country. Um, and we've gotten some support from, from, from many vegans nationwide who are really excited about this, this never done before film because there hasn't been a film to really focus on veganism and our understanding of veganism in the black community. So, you know, we're, we're very thankful for the support that we're getting, um, but people can definitely take a look at it on Amazon Prime. We definitely want to point out that um, some of our, our wonderful people in the film, of course, the director, Jasmine Leva, she, this was her brainchild, and she's an amazing woman, very fearless woman, um, and Cedric the Entertainer definitely has a, a role in the film. Yeah. And people are like, Cedric, wait a minute, is he vegan? And I'm like... Cedric has always described himself as vegan-ish. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we definitely uh, accept that and wanted to bring him into the fold. And he's got some funny things to say as well. Um, John Sally, who, who at the time was a spokesperson for PETA, mm -hmm. um, he's in there as well. So we've got some other um, notables in there who are very strong vegan, vegan um, advocates um, and, uh, you know, just introducing people to a whole new world that we hope that they will be interested in learning more about. So. Well, thank you for all the work you do in the vegan community and in the, when it comes to fibroid advocacy, you know, the fight against that. I appreciate you, Erica. Thank you for being my first guest on Vegan Sexy Cool, the podcast. And I'm sure you'll be back often. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I cannot wait. I want the whole world to know about this podcast. This is fantastic, Jackie. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, Thank you, Erica. So my next guest has quickly become one of my favorite people, she and her sister, uh, because they make some of the best food on the planet at their restaurant, Coffee and Cornbread in Teaneck, New Jersey. It is not, as I was saying earlier in the show, it is not a vegan restaurant, mm. but they have a lot of vegan options on their menu, so much so I try to go there as often as yeah. I can. And I do steal some of the recipes and cook <laughs> them at home myself. <laughs> <laughs> but the food is so good and it is delicious. Monique, welcome. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Monique Hudson. Thank you. Um, let me tell you. And she brought me some food. Yes. Tell me, wait, tell me what we have. Because I, while you're talking, sure. I may take a bite here and okay. there. So what is this? So this is a loaded hot dog, which we put um, relish, onions, mustard, and ketchup. Uh -huh. And that's a Beyond Sausage. Okay. Mm -hmm. That looks delicious. Yes. I would definitely be eating that. <laughs> what is this? And I haven't seen this on the menu. So this is a Beyond um, Burger Salad. Mm -hmm. So it's the Beyond Burger with spinach, tomatoes, and onions. I love that. And last but not least. That is our vegan cornbread. Which I love. <laughs> which you love. I love vegan cornbread. Because usually when I come to the restaurant, I come for breakfast. Uh -huh. do, do you all consider yourself a breakfast spot? I mean, yes. Because you have a little bit of everything. We have everything. Um, we are... What do they say? We are a, um, we are just breakfast, breakfast and lunch. So, they, you know, we have customers that, you know, say that we are um, a soul food fusion restaurant. Yeah, that, yeah That's yeah. the way they describe us. I like so that. So it's mostly um, breakfast um, and lunch items, but you can, you know, get chicken and waffles for dinner. That's the non-vegan items. Or um, if you're a vegan, you can have crispy chicken sandwiches or... You know, at breakfast for dinner. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So g kind of run down the vegan offerings that you all have. You don't have to name everything, yeah. but what are the, give, give, so give popular the items. audience an idea. Yeah, what are the popular so things? So popular. I'm going to take a bite of this while you're talking. So what you're about to eat is a popular item. I'm going to move the microphone. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, the, the vegan loaded hot dog and fries um, is how we pair it at the restaurant. You forgot and that. that I, I, they would have been cold now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, so that is um, definitely a top seller, but um, the number one seller for our vegan um, on our vegan menu is the uh, vegan egg and cheese, vegan sausage egg and cheese sandwich. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm chewing now. I know. Got to be talking, mommy. <laughs> so, um, so we have the vegan sausage egg and cheese, which actually is um, mm. is the number one seller for our, on our vegan item on our vegan menu. We have um, vegan pancakes. Mm-hmm. 
vegan pancakes. That's right. Yes. That's relatively new that on the menu. New. We actually added that a couple months ago. So tell me this. When you are, how long have you all been in business? Three years come April. Okay. Mm-hmm. When you started, was the initial idea to include vegan options? No. Really? So the idea was never, well, we never thought about it. Yeah. Um, and then just, you know, myself um, saying, hey, I think I want to be, you know, I want to eat more plant-based. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of our employees, she's a full vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were like, let's just start adding some items. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we did. So we started off with um, vegan hash was oh. our first vegan um, item. And that's just really home fries with tomatoes and spinach um, mm. added to it. And then it just kind of grew. We started at doing vegan French toast. Um, and then I think over the summer, we expanded the menu. So the menu is actually half vegan, half non-vegan. Yeah. Well, I know... Um you experiment a lot yes. um, because you're a chef because mm-hmm. you also cater. I do. You know, yes. t- share some of the things that are not on your menu, but mm-hmm. you make in your kitchen and for customers who are um, part of your catering business. Sure. So um, we actually do vegan chili, which we just use um, red beans, black beans, um, crushed tomatoes, crushed red peppers. <laughs> so good. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's a fan favorite um, mm. at our catering sites. We do vegan yams, which we just, it's yams, but we just use vegan butter um, in place. You don't need to use the real butter. Right. Um, so we do that. That's actually um, a favorite as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just the traditional non-vegan items, we do chicken and all that other stuff. But, you know, we can do a host of things um, for vegans. Well, I'm glad you're here because one thing I want to ask you about, and we can talk a little bit more about the business in mm-hmm. a moment, is for people that are listening to this and watching this that are saying to themselves, I want to do this vegan thing, but Mm -hmm. it seems hard. It feels hard, Mm -hmm. you know, when I'm cooking. But how easy is it um, to make these types of dishes? Oh, so this is um, very easy. I mean, it takes five minutes um, on the grill for the Beyond Sausage Mm -hmm. or 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. I mean, it's easy because those things are already prepared. But I guess guess retraining your brain. And then you, yes. So, I mean, if you want to talk about the the plant-based journey. I don't want to say that I'm vegan because I'm not. Um, I still need leather sneakers. I'm not yet. Not yet. Um, But I, it is, it's tough, right? In in the beginning, because you really have to get used to the idea of breakfast is not eggs and bacon. Um, You know, for me, breakfast now is spinach and toast. Right. Right. Um, But that's okay. And the more you start to do it, it becomes a habit. And it's like, oh, wow, I don't need eggs. Um, So I haven't had. You at your restaurant (laughs) make vegan eggs. We make vegan eggs. So so we can replace that. (laughs) Right. Um, And so that makes it easy for for me. Um, But the vegan vegan or plant-based lifestyle is is tough in the beginning. But there are so many substitutes. So if you wanted a chicken sandwich, you can have the vegan crispy chicken sandwich at the restaurant. Which I thought you were bringing. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you what happened, why you didn't get that today. But, um, well, I know you were testing some things yes. out. It's all right. I, I got to go to the restaurant now, which I'm overdue. So, um, so you can have that. You can do vegan cornbread, mm-hmm. which, you know, is really good. And you could just have that with coffee. Mm-hmm. And so we use, like, milk substitutes like oat milk and almond milk. So, you know, we definitely um, have enough for the vegans at the restaurant. This cornbread is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm the cornbread lady. <laughs> so, I'm going to need this recipe. I, uh, this is good. It's going to be in. When, so we're thinking about doing a cookbook, yes. like a how-to guide just for the transition vegan. Good. Because we, um, a lot of vegans come in and they, they say that our restaurant is really good for people who are transitioning mm-hmm. because they see familiar items on the menu. Yes. French toast, eggs. You can have all the things that you're used to having. Yeah. Um, and so... Definitely, we think that we can put like a how-to guide together. Um, you definitely those, can. Yeah. That's a great idea because that's what I tell people that are thinking about going vegan mm-hmm. or curious about it. Start where you are. Yes. Eat the foods that you like. Find vegan versions mm-hmm. of what you like. If you like pizza, get vegan, get vegan pizza. pizza. If you like spaghetti, do vegan spaghetti. Absolutely. Tacos, hot dogs, yes. eggs. Yes. It's it, You can yes. make just about everything. You Pound can. cake. Yes. Corn muffins. Mm-hmm. These are delicious. Carrot cake. You can do you can do anything. Everything. Yeah. You just have to kind of figure it out. And there's so many things out there on the internet that mm-hmm. you can find recipes. That's what I Absolutely. do. Absolutely. I just kind of you, you do, know, and then you make it your own. You make it yes. your own. I, I mean, love that's it. A, so what we've done with like vegan pancakes and the French toast was easy because yeah. you just eliminate the milk um, and the egg. 
But um, with the pancakes, we researched many different recipes. And mm-hmm. they were like, listen, we can do our pancake recipe and just eliminate um, the dairy. Right. And that's what we did because we have amazing pancakes that are non-vegan. So we were like, we can just duplicate that. I've had the vegan pancakes. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. delicious. <laughs> it's you. so good. I love this restaurant. Let's talk a little bit more about the business because mm-hmm. – even though you're not a vegan restaurant, mm-hmm. um, as I said, you have a lot of vegan offerings. Um, you all are making a name for yourself in the space, in the vegan space. Yes. You know, tell mm-hmm. me about, and don't be shy, don't okay. be modest, <laughs> just some of the ways that um, the vegan community has recognized mm-hmm. you and called on you. Like there was mm-hmm. a festival that you did yes. the exclusive breakfast sandwich for, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So we actually, it's it's so amazing. We went to Vegan Dale. So we didn't do Vegan Dale Festival last year, not last year, the year before. But we were told to go just to kind of see how it is, to just see if that was something we were interested in doing. Um, so Vegan Dell, um, they always want us to participate, but that's a lot for us. Yeah. Um, so we haven't done that. We have many different mini vegan festivals pop up, and they call on us because they found us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So their friends are tagging like our vegan egg sandwiches, and so this festival we were in was in Westchester. Mm-hmm. And they, they were like, listen, all the way from West, Westchester, we would love for you to come up here because we heard about your vegan egg sandwich. Yeah. Um, so so we've done that. We have, um, it's, it's just amazing. We've had customers argue about our food on Facebook in these vegan groups. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. What do they argue about? The price. <laughs> so, you know, so it was, you know, it's funny because we had a customer call us to talk about, you know, well, he sent an email and he said, you know, your food is overpriced. And I just wanted to, you know, I was wondering if you could substitute like the Just Egg mm-hmm. and you know how people use tofu scramble. Right. Well, that's not what we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's um, a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. Um, and so in this Facebook group, it was about 75 comments, customers defending us, saying it's amazing, you know, the food's amazing. Yeah. And you go to Whole Foods, you know how much this stuff costs. Right. You know. Um, but we 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 are we are creating fanatics. And yeah. that's what Monica says all the time. Yeah. You know, people are driving an hour away to come eat vegan food in our restaurant, it's which true. is amazing. It's mm-hmm. true. I'm yeah. so glad that I'm closer now <laughs> so I can get there and I will be there soon. Um, to try so many things. Well, Monique, thank you so much for being here thank and coming you. on my very first episode you, of yay. Vegan Sex Schools Podcast. <laughs> Glad you are here. Thank you so, so much. So I, I wish you continued success you. with the business, and um, I'll see you more and more. And you have you to will. come back and bring more food. Stop by I will. again with more Chicken food because I'm digging into all of this. I don't want to be rude. People hate when you eat into microphones. I get it, uh-huh. but I'll I'll behave now but i'm gonna eat in a minute (laughs) thank you so much thank you thank you next up is our phone a friend segment um where we're gonna have a a a listener or a viewer um we're gonna call them we're phoning a friend because we're we're all friends here and we're going to kind of talk to them about their vegan journey they could be just curious about being vegan. They could be newbie vegans. Or they could be longtime vegans um, and just have some issue they want to talk through. Again, listen, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. And um, I'm not a life coach. But I am a two-year vegan, so I do have some expertise. <laughs> and sometimes... Um, when we do this, there'll be other experts that'll be in the room. There'll be actual experts. I shouldn't inc- include myself in that. That'll be in the room that can chime in on this. But for day, for today, it is just myself and my good friend and line sister, Lystra David Stanley. Hi, Lystra. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I, I'm really well. I'm so glad you're doing this. What are you doing? People can see you. What are you doing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're on video. So listen, um, you always hear me because we're good friends. You always hear me talking about being vegan. And you do yes. eat a lot of vegan foods here and there, but you're not full on vegan. What's keeping yeah. you from doing it? I guess it's like lack of knowledge as far as buying certain foods and preparing certain vegan foods. Have you tried looking online, though? There's a lot of information well, I've, out there. I've, like I've been taking information from you and different websites. Uh-huh. And then certain things, you know, it's a little hard, you know, with Brian living here. Your husband. Cooking food. Exactly. Who we affectionately call Bri Bri. We all love Brian, her (laughs) husband. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. So he's not. So you so you so you you have a husband who is not on board with being vegan. Not even vegetarian. So he eats a lot of meat. 
eats a lot of meat. And a lot of yeah. cheese and dairy products. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, okay. So, so basically, is that the biggest hurdle? Like, what's the biggest hurdle? Lack of information or your partner is not on board? Uh, l- lack of information. You know, when I go to the grocery store, I don't see a lot of um, items that I can buy or yeah. that are good when I buy them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so then I kind of, you know. Are you going to Whole Foods or where are you going? Do you go to a grocery store like Trader Joe's or someplace like that that has a lot of options? Or are you going to like no. Pioneer or Key Stop, right? Shop, stop. Right, shop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's draw. That's the problem. I live in the boonies. I live out here in the booties. I know, you know. I know. But here, two things. Um, you can do Fresh Direct, which a lot of people assume in, in New York City, and she lives in New York, you can get, they have a delivery service, a food delivery service called Fresh Direct, right? Fresh yes. Direct does have a lot of vegan options, and a lot of people think that it's uber expensive, but it really isn't. But will you stop that? It's really not that crazy expensive. You look beautiful. Stop it. It's not crazy expensive when you factor no, in. I tried it before. When you, and also factor in that you're not buying meat. Right? right, so you're taking that right. cost, which is the most expensive thing we buy when we go to the grocery store. True, so, meat and fish. Yeah. So think about doing a food delivery like Fresh Direct. Think about now. I know you live in the boonies, as you say, but I bet you there's a Trader Joe in your area, right? Oh, now you're frozen. Is there a Trader Joe's in your area? In Hartsdale, it's a little dry, but I found one. So okay, so yeah. you you could go there like. Maybe I once could, a yes. week or so, you could you could make that journey and do that. And then if you go to vegansexycool.com, I did write a wonderful piece on um, the Milk Guys, which is a vegan grocery delivery service that will deliver to your door. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I wrote that down. Yeah, yeah and they that. have the biggest selection of vegan cheeses. Uh, so, so here's what I say. Okay. I would say try committing to... A partial vegan um, diet, like let's say vegan on the weekends or vegan after six right. or vegan right. before six or meatless mm-hmm. Mondays. I'm mean, eating meatless Mondays. That's too easy for you because you, you right. already yeah. dabble in veganism. You can go beyond that. Try to do mm-hmm. try to do it on the weekends. Um, I think you could do that. Yeah. I think you could I mean, do that. Yeah, because like just the other day I made, I, I told you earlier, I made a bean salad. Yeah. And I've been like a black bean salad with peppers and tomatoes and jalapenos. And I've been eating that and fruit and whatnot. You know what I mean? Right. So, so it's you, not hard for me. It's not. It's. <laughs> it, I, I think it's just getting to the grocery store. I think it's just finding. Yeah. Like if you did purple carrot, you would be good to go. Purple carrot is a meal prep oh, delivery it? service. Yeah. It's really good because uh, you can add. If Brian doesn't want to give up meat. You he can you can add meat to it. Like I got purple okay. carrot. I get purple carrot. I get three meal kits a week, mm-hmm. and you you it's easy to make because you get the portions that you need. So it saves you from going to the grocery store as often as you would. And then if you uh, make something okay. like a like a broccoli quesadilla, I made, <laughs> and you know if I'm cooking for my boyfriend, I'll just add a little seafood. You can add a little. You can add right. meat to whatever yeah, I do you're that making. Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do that now, kind of, sort of. Yeah, I do that now because I still eat fish, and then there's weeks where I don't eat any fish right. at all. So I'm kind of doing what you're suggesting, except it's not vegan. It's more vegetarian. Okay, okay, so, so the dairy is still... Of, right. It's just the cheese, though, Jackie, the cheese. Listen. The vegan cheese is not the best. Well, no, no, we had this conversation <laughs> because, listen... <laughs> Just like there are just some bad, uh, listen, burgers, you can get a bad, there are some, have you ever been someplace and got a bad burger, not vegan, but just regular, yes. right? Yes. There are good foods and there are bad foods in any category, right? right. right? So yep. all vegan cheeses aren't good, but that doesn't mean that all vegan cheeses are bad. You can find right, no. a good, like Miyoko's is one of my favorites. You know, you just have to kind of experiment. You have to find one that melts and stretches and taste. I found yeah, some great vegan cheeses. Similar, yeah. And they yeah. exist. 
they exist. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Look, don't say it like that. It exists. It's true. You can find it. Does. It does. I know. You even have it on your website. I yes, I do. Website. Yes, I do. But it's not at ShopRite and, and Shop and Stops. Well, so you're going to check Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Or the online. Yes. yes. Or the online. Or the ordering. online. You can probably get um, yeah. Fresh Direct delivered. So I think if you do those two things, I think if you do like vegan on the weekend or vegan before mm -hmm. six, because on six, you're on your own. And that gives you the evenings to eat with your husband and eat whatever he eats. Uh, OK, yeah, but he he always eats meat. No, but you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? You can add meat to whatever you're eating when he wants it. I just oh, like share it with him. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Who does most of the cooking? Who does most of the cooking? You or him? <laughs> He's so silly. Um, we we share it. We share, well, me because he cooks breakfast. I cook dinner. Okay, so it's me. So he but is he not. Always cooks how how's Brian's health? It, it would health not be a motivating lose, factor you for know, him. No, like me, like me, he could lose some weight, you know. But he hasn't gotten a physical in the longest time, so we will. We don't even know what his health is like. Well, that could be a good motivating factor. Maybe a visit to the doctor Absolutely. could push him in the right Absolutely. direction. Make that appointment. Absolutely. Absolutely. I keep telling him, but, you know. Brian is stubborn, Jacqueline. I know, I as is his wife, who doesn't want to yes. give up vegan cheese. I mean, give up regular cheese for <laughs> vegan cheese. You can find it. All right, Lister David Stanley. We This conversation is to be continued. <laughs> But I'm There's I'm, nothing like a good Cracker Barrel sharp cheese cheddar cheese now. Yeah, okay. But I'm, I'm going to get that other one you told me about. Go ahead and website. feed, feed those fibroids. Feed those fibroids. No, <laughs> no, but I don't eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> feed, that, oh, okay. feed that gout. Oh, feed yes, the gout. Yes. Feed the diabetes. <laughs> feed it. Feed it. Oh, my gosh. Yes, Jacqueline. My oh hypertension my is hungry. Let me get some Cracker Barrel yes, cheese. Yes, I'm feeding the pre-diabetes, yes, girl. I, yes, I need to stop. Come on, girl. I need to stop. Yeah, I know. Because my doctor was like, okay, you need to you need to lose a lot of weight in girl. order. Because I told him, I was like, I don't want to take this pill, this metformin stuff. You know, he said, well, it's just once. I said, no, I don't, I don't want to do this. I need to do something more natural to, you know, alleviate this problem. I'm not going to end up on pills for the rest of my life. Going vegan. You know I, mean? I mean, and you're too young for That's all that. That's why I'm trying to go vegan. Okay, exactly. so now we've got now we've got our why. I say you got to start with the why, your health. Yes. Motivating yes. factor. So, come on now, I need a commitment. What are you going to do? Are you going to do I'm, weekends? I'm going online. I'm going to go online right now. I'm going to order that vegan cheese and order some vegan stuff from um, fresh direct. And you know, you can make your own cheese too. I made a delicious cheese for my Did macaroni really? and cheese. Yeah, I made my own vegan cheese. You, really? I used some beans. With and the, with as much as you do, Jackie, you had time to do that? I did. You know, I had some off days over the holidays, so I really dug into it. But I do the nice. purple carrot, which takes like 30 minutes to cook because they give you nice. all the ingredients. It's good. Nice. I know. I'm, I, I'm says, I had some out. vegan mac and cheese uh, the other day last week, but I bought it. Was it good? But it was it was pretty good, yeah. See? It was pretty good. There is good vegan food out there. Okay, for the health, good. that's yeah. the motivating factor. So now we need yes. a plan. We need a plan. I think you need to do purple yeah. carrot because you don't have time. You don't have a lot of time. Purple carrot. Yes, I will. Look I'm looking purple it up carrot. Now. This is not the last conversation about that. We're going to... No, it's not. This. You're Let's coming back talking. on Vegan Sexy Cool. So we're going to check back in with Lister very soon and see where she is on Please this journey. Do. We Please do. We will. We will. We're going to put a plan she together. She needs help. She needs help. Yes. We're going to get that help. And we're going to get you off those pills. We're going to go to a vegan restaurant. Huh? We're going to get you off those pills. I have to get off those stupid pills. You I too. Can't. I got a whole she list did. of vegan restaurants to send you to. Okay. Start with Urban Vegan Kitchen. In, um, because you're in New York, go to Urban Vegan Kitchen or go to Coffee and Cornbread. Um, we talked to the owner of that earlier. Cornbread. It's in Teaneck, New Jersey. You'll love it. Lo really? Brian, love it too. Yeah, because they have vegan food and non vegan food. So you can both eat, but the food is delicious. Delicious. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right, Listra. Yeah, We're going to have you back. Ciao. Okay, darling. Ciao, Thank boo. you for inviting me. Thank you. Now I gotta figure out how to turn this off with the green screen and everything. <laughs> Bye. So that's it. I made Monique's stick around yeah. so we could do a champagne <laughs> toast for the very first episode oh of God. Vegan Sexy Cool. 
Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much for inviting me. Thank you for being here. Thank and you. before we say goodbye, goodbye, I just want to make sure that people know that there's something very special and intentional, uh, intentional about the ingredients that you all sure. use. Tell us about that. Um, so we are committed to serving um, all non-GMO and organic um, ingredients. That's, you know, we're committed to that. We think that that's important. I love that. So, yeah. And given the full vegan experience too, right? So it's yeah. vegan butter, vegan cheese, vegan mayo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, you got to go to Coffee and Cornbread. <laughs> Thank it's you. coffeeandcornbread.com. Coffeeandcornbread.com. Okay. So that does it for this first episode of Vegan Sexy Cool, the podcast. I want to make sure I get everything. So we're recording, as you know, if you're listening, there's this is a podcast. Right. But if you're watching, we're on YouTube. So subscribe in both places, not just one, do both. Um And thank you for tuning in. Hope you will come back. (laughs) And follow us on social media because Vegan Sexy Cool is on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So that does it for the first episode of Vegan Sexy Cool. Stay vegan, stay stay sexy, and stay cool. Cheers. Cheers.